Hello, hello! Here we are, back again at Dubai Watch Week, and we are the... Loom Plotters. Oh. Uh, uh, who's that? Oh, I sounded a bit different today. <laughs> I have suddenly gained an Indian accent. <laughs> well, you were born in India. I was. I was actually born in New Delhi. See? I don't know if many of our Loom Plotter followers know that, but yes, I was. Uh, now, we actually have a honorary Loom Plotter joining us. Um, you will hear a lot from him during the upcoming uh, episodes because he was integral in uh, helping set up and uh, um, joining us on some of our interviews that we did. In some of the inter interviews we had, he literally saved our ass. Uh, big time. <laughs> you will see this in the uh, upcoming Lauren Ferrier interview. Uh, oh, without but him. without him, we would have looked like absolute idiots. Yes. Which we do in any case every now and then. But uh, yeah, he saved us from one more of these. So exactly. That's great. And let's introduce him. Yeah. What is your name? My name is Rajiv. And Rajiv. tell us a, a few words about yourself, including, we could also say, what is on your wrist? Yes, what is on your wrist? Uh, on my wrist, I've got a, a Cartier Tank Normal, uh, the Platinum Edition with the bracelet, which is a, a limited edition of 100 pieces, which I had purchased this year. Uh, this watch was launched during Watches and Wonders. And uh, I had an eye for this watch, and I was just very fortunate to get this watch. It's absolutely mm. stunning. Yes, and uh, that that also disqualifies you from being a loom plotter because that is what way way what such a big heavy hitter. What, what it can is, you it do? Is, it's, uh... Where do you go from there? I mean, this is a, a stunning watch, and it's um, it's it's one of these watches that makes you just doubt yourself because once you hold it in your hand, and it weighs like as much as four watches. Yeah, and it just looks so Do elegant. Do you know the way to it? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. You don't. So we need to bring a scale next time. We we'll bring a scale. figure it's it out. It's just amazing. Is I, there I, an app I, for that? I can download. Uh, I then, think there is a touch center scale <laughs> on the iPhone, but <laughs> no, I don't know. But uh, it's really it's a it's a fantastic watch. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, what congrats. are you wearing, Martin? I am wearing um, also a platinum tank. No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I have a stainless steel. Boo. No. Uh, reverso, my reverso monoface. Uh, is there anything elegant, else to say about this? Elegant. It's I a reverso. It's a classic reverso. I always feel like I want a reverso. And then when I look at them and put it on my wrist, I think, yeah, it's nice. And then I speak to my wife and she says, it's an old man's watch. And I was like, no, nah, but I like it. I am an old man in here. <laughs> exactly. I should tell my yes. wife that, that. Basically, you're married to an old man now. So it's okay. Well, your opinion <laughs> will change about the reverso. <laughs> I, I think this is one that you grow into, and I yes, think I bought it early. Uh, and uh, in 20 years' time, I will still have it, and I'll be like, now is the time. Yeah, no, no, I think it is one in the, my future watch collection. There will be one. I'm wearing the um, Moser Heritage Dual Time at the moment. So, And we ran into a friend of ours who was also wearing the exact same watch. See, and that's the thing. I mean, according to the Milan brothers that are asked about it, um, we have about 200 of these watches made so far. It's not a limited edition, but they said, yeah, we have made, I think, one, one run of 200, um, and we might make another run. Uh, we don't know yet, right? So you think, well, I think here in Dubai, I know, I think, about five of these watches already. It's like, wow. It's... And you mentioned when you purchased it, yeah. the gentleman that had it, he bought it sec uh, yeah. you bought it second hand. My, my friend and then, yeah. Mazen has one, and then it's, of course, Nico has one, I have one, and then I think it's two other people that I can't remember their names, but I think I've seen that as well. So, yeah, there's quite a few around even yeah. in Dubai. Yeah? I think it's because of the burgundy dial. It's, uh, it's lovely. It's I lovely, like it, yeah. and even the... Uh, in uh, the numbers, the Kudu strap yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this indices uh, meanwhile, are, the indices are like it's got that Russian vibe, so which is why. And it, this is exactly what Benoit Metianis from Resonance told us just now. Yeah, yeah are you wearing all. a Russian watch? Yeah. watch? yeah, and it's uh, these are actually a ceramic filled with super luminova, wow. so they they glow at night. It's right, really cool, pretty right. nice actually. Yeah, yeah it's it's. Just, I mean, mm. and for me, that the I've said this a thousand times. I'm saying a thousand and one time. What I love about it is the hidden, quote unquote, hidden, you know, blending in GMT hand. It's so yes. cool. Yeah. That you it don't can see hide it. under the hour. And hand I showed hand. it to my brother, who is a big fan of Moser. And he, I said, oh, it's a dual time. He goes, what do you mean? Like, Look, there's a, there's a GMT hand. He's like, where? Look closer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's that's, super cool. It's really cool. I like it. It is. It Anyhow, is. so that's, that's that, uh, the word for today. So, yeah, Rajiv has... 
um, helped us so much in our in our interview so far. He has given us so much more um, smart, knowledgeable questions to ask to our yes. interviewers um, and, and has asked these questions himself. Well, he also himself, walks obviously. up to people and says, do you mind if we have an interview? Yeah. And uh, I think Ralph and I are too shy for this. Yeah, and ov obviously... <laughs> Rajiv brings another set of, of contacts with him. He's buddies with Waco and he uh, knows a lot of people in the, in the industry. So that's always very helpful for us too. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. we, we couldn't be happier to have him with us. Thank you very much. So it's no, really it's, cool. It's actually for me, it's an honor to be with you guys at uh, Loom Plotters. Uh, I've been following you guys for the last three months. And uh, it's been, and even your podcast has gone from uh, strength to strength. I think... Over a period of time, oh, weakness to weakness. <laughs> from no, no, no. I think, I think, I think, I, no, I think, I think your podcasts have just the the quality of your podcasts have improved a lot in the last uh, two or three months, mm. and which is why for me, when I'm driving around, I'll, Loom Plotters is generally the, ch the the channel that I. I, I, to. I we appreciate it. Thank I mean, you, that's it's so nice to hear, and uh, ultimately we we make it because we like talking about watches, and uh, we're always happy to hear that people actually listen to it because in our minds uh we're the only ones listening to our self talk we, we are we are still humbled that that people actually listen to our ramblings <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah that's really nice yes it is and so, then we appreciate it let's do this now we are sitting here in front of the press center outside the weather is lovely it's a finally good good temperature outside it was a bit humid earlier so we are happy sitting outside enjoying ourselves no loud music playing for the moment, so we are good. And we wanted to recap actually yesterday because we yeah. haven't done that before. It's um, just for your information, five o'clock in the evening. Um, we on have, the day three, but we want to talk about day two. And we still have so many things to do. Um, yeah, so. So uh, <sighs> let's kick it off. What exactly. did we start with? Um, actually, we started with nothing. Yeah. Yes. So uh, yesterday we had off, off, obviously the the rain, the a little rain, bit of so, rain. Uh, our interviews yeah. were unfortunately a bit, uh, yeah, postponed, a bit cancelled, so, so, a bit cancelled. <laughs> you could say yeah, a bit cancelled. Yeah. Uh, but we we hopefully will make up for that. Uh, we did have one with uh, Mr. Kenichi Maeda from Grand Seiko. We've since talked to it. Hopefully we will get the interview with him later yes. on this weekend. Uh, but. Uh, what did we do? So we talked We talked in the beginning with Tim Mosso. We talked to Waco. We talked to Adrian from Bark and Jack. We Andrew talk from Talking Hands. Yeah, Andrew uh, Morgan. Morgan, yeah, yeah. yes. We talked to James Dowling. Uh, we, I actually dragged him to give a watch advice to two ladies that asked me for watch advice. So I just handed him over, handed them mm -hmm. over to James Dowling. He got good advice. Uh, mm. We had two interesting interviews. Uh, Tobias Küffer. Was chief, I think, chief marketing officer from. Uh, he was a sales, a sales, sa sa sales, sales head of director sales, uh, for uh, Norcane watches. And yes, he had a very, absolute very nice, nice guy. Interview. I mean, he was just such a nice guy. Yeah, it was a pleasure to talk to him. Then we had a, a, a long interview with Mubarak from the Opto Watch Company. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then when uh, the day came to an end. Well, and first, before we went to that, we went uh, to a little seminar, a little uh, talk. Yes, we went to a talk with both. Uh, James Dowling and uh, Tim Mosso. Tim Mosso. Yeah, and they had um, a cl small discussion. Obsessive compulsive collecting, Col collecting or something disorder. like this. Ob obsessive, obsessive collective disorder. Collecting disorder. Something yeah. along these lines. Yeah, so they had the two different viewpoints of purging your collection versus hoarding or maybe mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. well, well, and James Dowling uh, admits to having 150 plus watches sitting in a safe meanwhile uh, Tim Mosso says he only has a few pieces but this isn't, isn't that what I think let's talk for, about that for a minute if you can I was thinking well I always have this deep respect for people who have like he said uh, if you are you're only a collector if you have a, a, a theme right so for example if he says I want to collect all the Rolex, the watches oyster, oyster. that made companies go bankrupt. For example, and that was a great <laughs> one, example. One theme, right? The, the watch that made uh, you know, bankrupted a company or something. Interesting theme for a collection, or all 1970s oyster quartz Rolexes that came out. Uh, some, you know. Yeah. And then he said, when once I finish that collection, then I can put them in my safe and move on to the next. And I think, like, but why is it finished? Yeah, because that's his. 
His identified mindset. theme, right? Yeah. And I'm always looking at my collection or even my friends' collections, and I don't have these kind of themes. No. So in his definition, we are not collectors. We have, correct, we correct. have multiple watches, uh, but we are not necessarily collectors, as in there is no theme to it. We, we want to have different watches for different use cases, but it doesn't mean it's a collection I, I, in, but, his, but, but in his mind. In my mind, it's also not correct to mm. do this. I started this. I, I mentioned this. My first watch was a Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. Yeah. I don't know why. It was cheap. It was a Timepiece 360. I bought it. Then... Watch, I felt man. I knew the brand. So what it was my second watch? A Carrera. Because in my mind, I am now a Tac Heuer collector. But ultimately, this was not, for me, the right choice. Mm. So then I wanted to experience other brands and branch out. So in my collection, it's, it's a very broad collection yep. of multiple brands. And I still feel that, I have mentioned, I don't look at myself as a collector. I look at myself as a watch enthusiast. You're and right. in this yeah. case, the James Dowling uh, philosophy is correct. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's true. I mean, I mean, I know that Rajiv, for example, has a specific one or two models in mind that he thinks once he acquired them, you will feel yes. complete and correct satisfied. Not so sure if I would say that about me because whenever I get one watch that I think that's it, that's my Grail watch, and that changed so much over the years, that's it, and I, I stop collecting. But then, of obviously, uh, it opens up other things, right? So, right. My my strategy is like uh, I won't say a strategy. I always look at uh, this is something which I've learned over a period of time. I ha I've had a few uh, Zenith watches, uh, and uh, that's when I realized that end of the day, there's no point having uh, so many watches of one brand, with the exception of an odd Rolex. Rolex is that one brand where you would want to have all the complications. You want a GMT, you want yeah. a Diver, you want a uh, Chronograph, you want a uh, you want a uh, annual calendar. Uh, so and, and it's so funny because Rolex is one of these brands that anyone you yeah. could start today first watch you see and I'm like I want Rolex. Yeah. Then you could be into like James Dowling down the rabbit hole for seventy years of collecting. And still want Rolex. It's yeah. just, it transcends Correct. boundaries. So Rolex is that odd exception. But otherwise, most of my watches, uh, I kind of stick to one watch, uh, one brand. And like, for example, uh, for Grand Seiko, I had the, I initially had the Snowflake. But the moment I saw the Omi Watari, I got rid of my Snowflake and then I bought the Omi Watari. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's the kind of strategy that I kind of build on. So it, in a way, I have each Grail watch uh, of uh, each brand. Yeah. And then I, I stick to it. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah. Do you ever go into a second or third watch from a brand or do you? Uh, uh, the, which is why I, I had that with Zenith mm -hmm. uh, and I changed my strategy. I, I mean, literally, I realized there's no point having multiple watches like IWC. Uh, I had the uh, IWC Pilot uh, AMG Mercedes. The uh, big pilot. Uh, not, yeah, the pilot, the uh, 41. It was a 41. Okay, it was not the big pilot. It's okay. not the big pilot. Not uh, the new one, not the 43 AMG no, Patronus. No, no, no. It's the, it's the, the 41. One. The, the one which was launched two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Or rather last year. I let I let it go because I wanted the engineer. But does the engineer sum up what is IWC? And this is the issue for me. There are brands where they have multiple watches. Yeah. Um, with Grand Seiko, you could argue, a lot of people argue, um, high beat, quartz, spring drive, yes. right? Those are the three. And by having your one spring drive, you're not necessarily complete. And this is the issue that I had uh, with, uh, you know, let's say with my uh, Rolex, I had the sub. And then I was like, you know what? I could really go for a date just. Got the date just. Well, you know, uh, I really like the size of the date just, but the, the, the tooly look of the sub, I'll get an Explorer 36. And, you know, you just kind of keep doing this and uh, you fall into this trap. Yeah, it's lots of options in the Rolex catalog that yes. you really, really, you know, and once you're hooked on Rolex, I think, well, it's, yeah, you know, it's hard to go elsewhere because it's also so easy to swap out because you get mostly what you paid back if you're lucky. If you didn't buy for astronomical prices, you are actually quite okay. So it's easy to say, okay, I trade this in and or trade up 
right? Mm-hmm. I move up the, the chain. Uh, and it's hard when I feel it's hard once you start with Rolex not to buy another yes. one. Yeah. Uh, at I, some they, stage it's like cocaine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just so, want to reel you in and keep you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's generally a person who first buys Rolex will only focus on uh, AP or Patek. Uh, as their main as the mainstay watches. They won't go and explore or enjoy uh, the other watch Well, brands. we just heard this from uh, Christie's. They mentioned this too, right? Yeah. 80% of their sales is AP, uh, Patek. Uh, Patek, and Rolex. Yeah. Which uh, he said mostly the people that are collecting these will not go and buy themselves a Breguet or a Blanc Pong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people who buy Breguet, Blancpain, these kind of people, I, I think there's, these are watch connoisseurs that love the complications. Obviously, also the design. I mean, this is all very subjective, right? I mean, certain Blancpain speak to specific people. Some people, you know, prefer the Submariner. Some people just hate that design and want a Blancpain 50 Fathoms because that's what they, they like more. Because yep. it's a more maybe delicate, maybe a bit more... Um, not less toolish, a bit more Nuanced. elegant brand or something. Yeah, it's, it's just a different ball game. But right? by, the, by that same thought, you told me this morning, Rajiv, that you have a thing for weird bracelet watches. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, you are a collector of weird bracelet watches, even if they're, they're from well, different brands. Yes. Right? These are all collections correct yeah, uh, that could be a theme that could yes. be a tur- totally a theme for a collection uh, ana- yeah. another theme is dials i yeah. generally have different types of dials like an enamel i yeah. have uh, i have a uh, uh, different color I mean, sunburst or any of these other dial- the colors are all generally different so which is why i try to keep it different uh, and unique yeah. uh, in my collection. So mm-hmm. when I see something which is very similar, then I kind of move on and uh, kind of offload those. I feel like all of my watches would look exactly the same to you. Like all like either <laughs> silver dial or black dial and that's it. Yeah. But- I, had a, I had for a time, I had so many blue dial watches that I thought, well, that's it. I mean, that's my, my theme then. I just yeah. love blue dial watches, right. right? From different brands. You know, I had the Black Bay 58 in blue. I had the Blue Seamaster 300 professional i had the blanc pan 50 fathoms platys cuff in blue i had the blue oyster perpetual i had and so on it's just, it's just like blue 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 yeah because i think blue was the in thing right at that time, at that no, point time. i still like the in thing blue yeah. is just a cool color yeah which is why it, which is why <laughs> i meant <laughs> but, but, it's the, the, in but thing. The, no, the in thing was in for a short yeah. period of time it was big yeah. but blue has historically think, been yeah. a very popular dial color yeah, i think it's timeless relatively it is, yeah, it, it, is, is timeless, it is absolutely it's, look it's at way, the look at the snowflake yeah it's way better than the black right so in I mean. that one watch, there are watches where this is not always true. <laughs> so let's not always say that blue beats black. But so, gentlemen, I know we are again in in the full s- stream of things. But we have uh, another event. But yeah, before we event. do and that we event, have we have to say, to say exactly. the we last have to speak thing about one thing. So. Mm. Um, well, we will all talk about this. I will start, and then you will continue because I feel like we have to build it up. It was the biggest thing to ever happen to any of us. Um, so we had an original, we had an interview with, the last thing of the day was an interview with Pierre Biver, uh, which is Jean-Claude Biver's son, regarding their new watch brand, Biver Watches. So uh, we went there, it was a 6 p.m. interview. We wait, no one. Well, we were told he didn't even come to Dubai, was, so was, uh, he must have canceled. Not well, yeah, so um, so uh, okay, we pack up, we leave. And then what happened, Ralph? Well, I got a frantic call saying like, hey, I got, uh, I got another beaver. I got another beaver here um, who was willing to do the interview. So we had... Is it his mother? <laughs> Is it his wife? <laughs> who can it be? Is it his son in, uh, you know, the son-in-law or who, whoever it is? I, we thought like, okay. We'll oh, take it. We, 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 we dashed back with our stuff under our arms. And with, with, a, with a 1% hope that it's going to be the man, the myth, the legend himself, JCB. Yeah, and there he was, waiting in the booth for us. Trying to book his return flight yes, on his like phone. Oh, he, was, he, was, he was busy. And we set up very quickly. I was very nervous to make sure that I actually pressed the record button. And, we were, and we were I, I mean, for all intents and better purposes, we were shitting our pants. Yes. I mean, there we have him. I mean, directly in front of us in, in a like three square meter room or something and uh, just talking directly to him. And I think uh, it went, it couldn't have run better. 
no, we I had have. a fantastic, fantastic interview with him. I think. Uh, in yeah. in John Claude's words, perfect, perfect. perfect. <laughs> uh, and, yes, and even the ladies uh, in the reception of the press center. We said, asked afterwards. We asked. He looked really, really satisfied and happy, and he doesn't usually he look said, like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. We we said okay. Well, first they said he he was smiling when he left, and we're like, mm. well, does he smile when he leaves other interviews? Because he could be smiling yeah. for everyone. And she said, no, this is the happiest we've seen him in a while. Wow, and, and I was yeah. that was and that for oh, us really and uh, well, yeah. should we talk about it now? How about Your what? blessed, my blessed watch. Yeah, we can we go, go into details, but yeah. I actually my watch must have probably gone up three times in value, just because of this interview. Because mm -hmm. when he saw this blanc pont, um, he took it, he he marvelled at it. He really was very he was, excited he about the it. He opened the case yeah. back. He was really happy to see this watch. I was very surprised about this because he must have seen a lot in his life, right? And then he gave it a big kiss, a big smooch. So <laughs> now uh, my watch is kissed by Jean-Claude Pivet. So what, what, I mean, yeah, I can't I mean, ask for more, but what do I do? I mean, I can't wear it anymore, right? So I have to yeah. put it in a vitrine somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> in you seal it hermetically? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. But, yeah. yeah. All right. On, on that bombshell, there's yeah, exactly. nothing we can say nothing that will else. top that ever. Um, Jean-Claude Biver kissing your watch. Yeah, exactly. So, what a crazy, crazy thing to it was. It was, we well, we left and we were just astounded that yeah. this yeah, we just were, happened. We were like school kids just, uh, you know, jumping around saying that this is one of the best things that happened. We yeah. saw our idol, yeah, we were starstruck, yeah. we were happy, shaky legs. It was amazing, yeah. And you will hear this interview at some point in the future? Absolutely. I think it will be uh, fantastic and uh, looking forward to share it with you guys. Yes, and tomorrow we will come back and have the review of today, mm -hmm. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> at some stage exactly yes but we still have a lot to do today so um we have to get going thank you for listening thank you for tuning in bye bye from me ciao take care all righty bye 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 all right uh... See how when we just it's us, it's so much different. Cause this